Hello, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome to our training today. I'm so excited. We're a little couple of minutes before the hour, but I wanted to jump in here to say hi. Um, you have the chat box, so I'd love to know if you're hearing me because there's no training if you're not hearing me. So if someone can please type into the chat box, if you can hear me, that would be very much appreciated. Hi, Megan. Thank you. Okay, great. So now we know we have the sound. Okay, perfect. Thank you. <coughs> I'm so excited. I There's so many of you joining us and so many of you that couldn't make it live, but you will be catching a replay later. So if you're watching me live, welcome. I'm so excited to be here. I'm uh, really glad that I have this opportunity to do this training. Uh, oops, a little bit of feedback. If we have too much feedback, I will drop the, um, the earplug. So I'd love to know who you are, where you're from, Drop in the chat box so I know where everybody is from. We're going to get started in one minute. I want to give a chance to everyone to join. And while, oh, LA, oh, it must be so warm in LA today. We just, we have a snowstorm here that's on its way. Madrid, Spain, wonderful. Calgary, Alberta. I'm in Quebec, Canada. That's French Canadian, that's, that's the art accent. Um, you, I'm sure. Hi, Norma. Nice to see you. Chris, Nicola, Susan. Snowing. <laughs> Not snowing, but rain. Okay. Cologne, North Carolina. <clears throat> Hi, Sally. Well, while everybody is joining, I want to say a special welcome first to those of you who made time to be here live. I want to also welcome all my lab members, I know a few of you are here, uh, so I wanna thank you for being here today um, and rooting me on, my lab members, my clients. I wanna take a thank uh, Sally from Colored Pencil Magazine who put out the invitation to her network, so I know a lot of you came in through Color Pencil Magazine, so welcome, where I'm also a contributor. Uh, who else I wanna thank? Oh, I wanna thank Shana also, so you might see her, Shana, in the, um, in the uh, chat. So Shana is my assistant, and she'll be helping you in the chat if anything comes up. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm gonna open up my slides, and we're gonna get this thing going, um, how to grow your art business in 2018 without sacrificing your creative practice. So let's get started. Hmm. Okay, here it is, here it is. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, okay, I can now see the chat, but I need to move it. That's usually an issue, oops, when I can't move it. Because I said, right, okay. So here's what we're gonna do. Okay, we're gonna move the chat. So I'm not always gonna be able to look at the chat during the presentation, obviously because I have my notes, I have you, but um, I promised you that I would answer your questions and I will do that at the end, okay? So again, welcome, because I'm seeing people who are just joining in, okay? So we have people who are gonna hop on. Um, so welcome everyone to this How to Grow Your Art Business in 2018 Without Sacrificing Your Creative practice, free life training with me, Catherine Horat, a business and PR strategist for artists and founder of The Artist Entrepreneur. Okay, so I know your time is precious. 
And I really, really appreciate, I'm so grateful that you're here with me today to do this training. So I, my goal today is to make this hour as valuable as can be for you, okay? Uh, some of you who have joined me on other trainings know that I have a tendency to go a little bit over because I ad lib and I always have a ton of things to say, um, but I will try to respect your time and stay within the hour. Uh, but if the Q&A goes over, I'm in no rush to leave. I will take all the time to answer your questions, okay? So basically what I promised you that we would talk about today when you signed up, what did you sign up for, right? Um, well, we're gonna talk about the reasons, right? Why you aren't where you want to be. Uh, the five steps to growing your business, your art business more specifically in 2018, right? Because we're already two months in 2018, right? Remember those resolutions you did two months ago and you said that this year would be different? Well, is it really different? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. We're gonna talk about what you need to do this year if you wanna grow, okay? Um, really what I'm gonna share with you today, it's not rocket science, it's easy tweaks that are game changers for your art business. Um, the best way to grow your social media following, so I've gotten, when I sent out the invitation, I got a lot of replies of people telling me, SEO, how do I grow my email list? How do I get more people to follow me? We're gonna talk about that. The key and often forgotten ingredient that will make or break you, we're gonna go talk about that throughout. <laughs> and the one and only question you should be asking yourself every week in your art business. Some of you who have my blueprint, some of you have been following me, you know what that question is. We're gonna talk about it again. So you can finally start seeing the results that you want. So a lot of you know me, but a lot of you, when I was looking at the guest list, you just, we just met. So I just quickly wanna introduce myself. So Catherine Horaire, that's my name. Um, I have 17 years, I counted yesterday, 17 years, that doesn't make me younger, of experience in the corporate, NGO, and art market sector, okay? Working more specifically in marketing and PR. I've studied the business of art at Christie's in Europe, the famous auction house. I've taught creative entrepreneurship at college level. I've worked at galleries, international art fairs, and now I work directly with artists, helping them grow their art business. I'm founder of The Artist Entrepreneur, where I help artists set and reach ambitious goals for their art businesses. This is me. Um, in the middle, you see me doing a live video. Oh my God, I'm wearing the same shirt. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> So, so this is me doing a live video uh, chat with my lab group a couple of weeks ago. Um, on the right hand side, you see my why, right? You see why I do what I do. It's for my husband and my two lovely children, Sebastien and Julian. This photo was taken during spring break when we did an igloo outside. And on the left-hand side, you can see me last fall with uh, two colleagues, friends um, at the Toronto International Art Fair, two friends of uh, art galleries that I know very well and that uh, uh, were ha that had a booth there and I visited them because I rare I regularly am visiting galleries going to art fairs to see what is ha happening in the art market because that's the way I can support artists and this is my Wonder Woman cup I take it everywhere if you do any training with me you'll see that I always have it so basically what I want you to know about me is I believe that all artists have their place on the art market just need to find the right place and you can definitely have a business that fulfills you creatively and um, financially. But enough about me, okay? Because today we're talking about you. If any of you have questions about me, my work, you can always drop me a note on theartistentrepreneur.com, okay? So um, the question I wanna ask you is, is this you, okay? So you can answer me in the 
chat box is this you do you recognize yourself is this how you're feeling when we're talking about your art business and career okay so if i were to meet you in real life and ask you how your business is going um would you say great cat it's going awesome or you would you be like oh my god i'm so overwhelmed right i'm tired of spinning my wheels i lack vision i'm not sure what i should be doing next uh, I don't feel confident. I'm just imagining this, but I've been working with artists long enough to know that usually if they show up for this kind of training, it's because they have these kinds of feelings, right? And what I've noticed and what Dale Carnegie has always, uh, has also noticed is that it's not really overwhelmed, right? It's more like we're worried, we're frustrated, we have resentment because you know there's this thing called Instagram and everybody's doing seems to be doing so much better than you right so we're fatigued right we're kind of so when Del Carnegie wrote this there was no Facebook or Instagram but I'm adapting this to today's world right um, so yeah I mean we're frustrated because and I say we because I'm an entrepreneur too and I see these other people and um, now I reframe this, I reframe this frustration and worry and resentment. But I remember when I started out, and I often tell the story of my first business that didn't go so well. Um, yeah, there's, there's resentment, there's frustration, and we think it's overwhelmed because we think we should be doing all the things, right, that others are doing, that we think they're doing to get the results that they want, okay? What I want you to know is that I get it, okay? Um, and building an art business, it's not the easiest path that you've chosen. Let's be honest here. I'm not here to paint like the pretty picture and tell you that it's gonna be so easy because no, if it was that easy, everybody was, would be successful. But if you're willing to do the work, if you're willing to shift that starving artist mindset, invest in your business energy support um, time then it is possible and you could feel like him right isn't that a great photo reminds us of that we're not so young if you know who that person is it means that like me you're yeah we're not as young as we used to be <laughs> although I hear he's now on Netflix so now everybody knows him um, but the first step, right, the first step to growing your art business is to show up. And today, you are showing up for this um, workshop, so I congratulate you for that. And now we wanna take this to the next step because it's not only about showing up, it's about having the right strategies, executing those strategies, and having that mindset, okay, that entrepreneurial mindset that I work with all the artists I work with, we work on that. Okay. Um, mindset is something we're going to talk about a lot during this training because I believe it's 80% of building your business and the other 20% is strategy and execution. So during this training, okay. Um, if you don't prioritize your life, someone else will, okay? So I'm glad you're here today that you're prioritizing this time for you. During this training, we're going to talk about things that you're gonna be excited about and other things you're gonna be like, what is she talking about this I'm not gonna do? Or I don't have that problem, this is not me, okay? Resistance is going to show up. Every time we're ready to move beyond the level that we're at, we're, we're ready to move to the next level, there's this thing called resistance that shows up. So if you, if uh, uh, during this training at some point you end up like this, or you end up taking your phone and scrolling and you're, you're, you're kind of tuning out, please come back to us. Trust the process. Uh, it's totally normal. Um, you don't have to do it all at once, but just be conscious that that's happening to you and just uh, get back into being in the present and what we're teaching today because this is a unique opportunity um, I don't do these free trainings a lot okay um, 
so okay this training is for you if you're um just starting out have a few sales done or even if you're mid-career there's something for everyone okay if you're tired of spinning your wheel if you're ready to try something new willing to get out of your comfort zone this training is for you so last thing before we get into the content i would love to you to stay until the end okay why first i will be doing a live q a so if you have questions you can already start popping them into the chat like i said i am not in a hurry to leave i always answer all the questions the second thing is that i will also take five minutes of your time at the end of this training and i promise you i always say five minutes and i always um deliver on that commitment to introduce you the lab the artist entrepreneur lab my exclusive business incubator because it only opens once or twice a year and it opens today so i want to introduce you to this opportunity if you're interested and if you're not that's totally fine but still stay till the end because the q a's are usually very very powerful okay okay so let's get to work close distractions if you have emails phones instagram don't think we need to stop glorifying multitasking. It's making you less productive. Grab a notebook, grab your cup, and let's get into the content. Okay, so five reasons you aren't there yet, okay? So by the way, what does being there <laughs> mean, okay? Because I hear that so much. Um, Building a business is not necessarily only about the end game, although it's nice when you can pay your bills. Um, it's also about the journey, okay? And there is no there. If you're here, chances are you have big ambitions, you're an overachiever, uh, you have big dreams. So by the time you reach that there, you're already going to be another place and you're already going to have more um, ambitious goals, okay? So we need to enjoy the journey because we're doing something that we want it to be sustainable for the long term, okay? So mm, the reasons, well, first you're trying to do everything, right? So you're probably doing nothing <laughs> well because you're trying to just like do so many things. You have lack of clarity and planning, Okay, so I'll talk about uh, planning. I think it's on the next slide. Um, so many artists I meet are allergic to it. I don't know what happened in their childhood <laughs> or, in their, or in the early adulthood that gets them, they start scratching themselves when I talk about planning. And this is actually my thing. I love doing it and I love sharing how you can do it and to actually enjoy planning, set goals that you are actually able to reach. Uh, opposing creative and business work. I see that in the Artist Entrepreneur Network, right? Oh, I'm confused. How much time should I be doing creative work? How much time should I be doing business work? As if they're two separate things, right? I'm gonna talk about how you should be bringing those together so that they work together and that you have more purpose. Uh, you're hiding from your fans, right? When, you know, when my Instagram looks better, then I'll reach out, right? Or when, um, when I have a proper color scheme or a proper camera or a proper whatever, then I'll show up right? Um, so you're hiding from your fans. You have resistance toward that. And you have resistance towards selling. Just yesterday, I received the, um, an email from someone saying that, you know, she was like super excited of the results about building her email list, but she just had a block. She couldn't ask for the sale, right? So what's the point of building an email list if you're not asking for the sale? So dwelling on what you can't control or what happened in the past is the biggest reason your future will be stunned. So that, that um, quote doesn't really relate to the context, but it's just because I really liked it and I thought that somebody might need it to hear that today, so I put it there. Okay, so the five steps to growing your business in 2018. So today we're gonna talk about um planning building your creative credibility 
growing your community and nurturing it, especially cash, because you don't have a business if you don't have sales and if you're not bringing in cash, if you do, then it's a hobby, right? And then growth. If you have my five-step blueprint, right, you've seen these five steps already. Uh, today, we're going to go through each step and I'm going to give you some tips, specific tips for each. Of course, we could be doing a whole training actually in the lab. That's what we do. We do full trainings on each of these, right? But for the purpose of today's presentation, we're just going to have to cover all of it in one presentation. So let's get rolling with step one, planning, okay? You know how earlier I was saying that you need to align, right, your business goal and your creative goals because if they're not working together, then you'll miss purpose, you're, you won't have proper vision, and you'll feel scattered, okay? Um, a lot of artists feel resistance. Um, going from I want to create whatever I want to create to creating purposefully for my business okay because they think that if they create purposefully for their business they're selling out uh, I've worked long enough in the art market with artists to, to know that that's not true at all you only sell out if you think you're selling out, okay? <laughs> the only person, the first person needs to believe that is you, okay? What I want for you is to be aligned and sell with purpose. Know what you are selling, know what you are creating. Might sound obvious, but if you start doing a little bit of introspection and looking into your studio, what you're creating, why, what kind of deadlines you put for yourself, and what you're planning on selling this month, maybe you'll see what I'm talking about, okay? So how do you align, right, uh, your creative and your business goal? You need to know what you're creating to plan your sales, right? And you need to know what you're planning on selling to plan your creative work, right? Because it's the same way that if you're a gallery, a gallery is planning a show for you, right? You're gonna map out what you need to create for that show. Uh, so that's an example that's very obvious, but then what do you do in between shows, right? And that's really what, I'm not against working with galleries, on the opposite, I think it's a great way to build your credibility, but what's the truth is that right now, galleries, they're not opening or closing, so artists need to find new ways to sell art in between shows, right? Um, so how do you do that, right? You need to create a plan, okay? So how are you gonna make a living with your art? You need to map it out. So first you need to map out your vision because selling art, selling my art, I see that often also. <laughs> so I, what's your vision? I wanna sell my art. I wanna make a full-time living with my art. That's not a vision. Or if it's a vision, it's pretty boring. Um, you need to know and run your numbers, right? How much do I need to sell this month, right? Do I have the, the inventory to sell that? Do, am I investing in the mar proper marketing to sell what I need to sell? Then that's when you can start setting creative and revenue goals. And once you have your goals, then you can create, create a plan that you will execute by scheduling your priorities. Now, this is a very condensed, if you can do a screenshot of this and keep that somewhere, um, it's a great, great starting point. It's a very condensed version of a strategic planning session, but if you follow this, you, I will guarantee you, you will see results. Why is it important, right? Well, having a clear vision and plan is the best way to cut the overwhelm because you're not always just like taking whatever's coming your way. You're working purposefully. You can ask yourself, what I'm doing right now, is it helping me move forward with my goals or not, right? Um, I do this for myself. I do this with my clients. Trust me, it 
works, okay? Uh, it's going to help you also prioritize and value your creative work because if you don't have a plan, uh, the biggest trap that could happen is that you go into this art business thinking that you're going to create more time to create, but then you end up just filling that time with busy business work and that's not working with purpose. And that wasn't the point, right? That wasn't the point to put more busy business in your day. So planning, planning is the first step, okay, towards building your art business. If there's one thing yet I want you to take away today, it's that. It takes a strong mindset though, to always come back to the planning process and look at the numbers and pivoting if your goals are not necessarily, um, you're not necessarily reaching the results that you want instead of you know, hiding under a blanket and crying and throwing yourself a pity party. Um, it's a challenge. So what I recommend is getting support for that whether it's an accountability partner, someone in your community, a mentor, a group, uh, because relying on willpower when it comes to this, very hard. Unless you're a geek like me who just loves doing it. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Credibility. What's our time? Oh, we got time. Okay, credibility. Are you being memorable? Okay, so this, this uh, section is kind of an hybrid on branding and PR, right? We're gonna talk about branding, we're gonna talk about PR because if you wanna build your, your credibility, you, have, you need to have a strong message, but not only that, you need to have other people who are talking about you. You're not camping, it's just be the person talking about yourself, okay? Um, so you, if you wanna build your credibility, you can't be the only one talking all the time, right? You wanna have raving fans, right, that are talking about you, influencers, press, media. Uh, but to do that, you need to be memorable, right? If you don't have a strong message, right? If nobody really knows what you're about, they're not gonna talk about you, right? So when, we talk, when I talk about branding, I'm not talking about a logo. Chances are you don't need a logo. What I'm talking about is a strong message, is a strong why, right? And because that's really the core, right? That's really the core of everything you're gonna communicate and your marketing, right? Once you've done your planning and you're ready to put yourself out there, you're gonna to wanna to communicate something. You wanna communicate what your brand, what your art, what you are all about. And that doesn't translate into a logo, translates in your message, right? So, are you clear on the essence, on the why, on the why behind your work, right? Are you using the power of storytelling to get your message across, right? Or are you just like slapping photos on Instagram of your artwork with a title and a price, right? Which is not engaging at all. Uh, are you asking yourself, why should people care? Now, here's the trap. Why should people care about what you have to say? And then the feedback I get is, well, Catherine, that's the thing. I think, why should people care what I have to say? I don't have anything interesting to say. So there's the trap, right? Because you need to go deep and really identify why people should care, but then it's easy to spin into this negative self-talk about, oh, nobody has nothing, nobody's gonna care about what I have to say. Trust me, people care about what you have to say the same way that you care about what other people have to say. You just need to package it properly so that people get it, okay? So to be credible, we need to know what you're about. Why? Because people buy from people they know, like, and trust. I didn't invent this. You've heard this before. To build credibility, you need to go through know, like, trust factors, right? And your message needs to be easily repeatable, right? 
if people can't say what you're about, right? They're not going to be able to repeat it. They're not going to talk about you. If they don't get it, they're not going to talk about you, right? A lot of people feel overwhelmed when they're looking at artists. They're afraid they're not getting it, right? I don't get it. So it's like when people look at abstract art and they absolutely feel that they need to see something. Otherwise, they're not getting it, right? I've sold art for many years at all different levels of price points. Trust me, collectors are very uh, self-conscious. They're worried that they're not getting it. It's your job to make sure they get it, okay? So get clear on your brand. Your message is your most, is, is almost as important as your style, okay? Be coherent in your message. So somebody asked me um, in the messages that I received, like, I work in a, so many different, I work in different styles, and I'm worried that people won't get it. Well, Austin Kleon says in his book, um, Still Like an Artist, he says, you know, it doesn't matter if you have different styles. What's important is that they're all from you and people want to hear from you, right? So that's why your message is really, really important because even if your styles are different, if people are always hearing your voice and are seeing what it is about each piece that make it your piece, then it becomes interesting for them. Now, there's a whole other discussion that we could have around presenting to galleries if you work in different styles, um, but that's more of a um, specific from artist to artist, so I can't really address that in this situation. But in terms of communications, branding, marketing, it's more about your messaging, okay? So like I said, right, remember Simon Sinek? People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. That's why it's important to share your why, to have a clear message, okay? Um, word of mouth starts with a good elevator pitch, like I said earlier. If you can't even, um, yeah, if you can't really articulate, that's the word I was looking for, articulate your message properly, how can you expect others to do it, right? If you have a strong message, then you can start pitching that message and you can create PR opportunities where people talk about you and it accelerates the no like track. Trust, not truck, trust factors. Okay, so how's everything going now? Good, recognizing yourself in a few of these. Okay, so marketing in 2018, and I, I should say, it's been a few years now, right? It's not just about pushing info out there, because remember how we are, again, yesterday I was watching another documentary about brands and screens and how many images that we are, that are thrown at us every day over 5,000 images. Can you believe that? Okay, so just pushing info out there without engagement, without emotional connection, without um, really building a community is a lot of wasted time and money because it's going to be very hard for you um, as a small business owner to cut through the noise, right? So, oh, how did that happen? Why is there a line there? Oh, I did something and I don't know what that is. Okay, whatever. <laughs> what is going on with my screen? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so that's why actively growing and engaging with your audience, building emotional connections because one thing we know is that any purchase, most purchases have an emotional component to it. That we know. But think about the emotional connection between buying a mattress and buying art. You see how, of course, there's always an emotional connection with everything we buy, but when we buy art, the, the, the 
emotional connection is even bigger, right? So if, if you're not working towards creating that emotional connection with your audience, then you're missing out totally, okay? So we want to build a community. That's all nice, Catherine, but how do I do that, right? How do I build my uh, Instagram? How do I build my email list? right? Um, how do I get more traffic to my website, right? Well, it's by creating a community, community, okay? Um, but how do we do that, right? So there's a lot of ways to grow community. Um, I have to say that um, although a few years ago, organic reach was one of the good ways to do it. We all know now that social media is a pay to play platform. Um, so it's beginning, beginning more and more difficult, right, um, to reach people organically. Um, and I hear like, how do I beat the algorithm? You can't beat the algorithm. There's no such thing as being the algorithm, right? All you can do is be relevant, and build emotional connections because the more you're relevant to the people who are following you, the more they will seek you and the more visibility you will have. And not just in my opinion, in the opinion of artists I've worked with, students I've had in my classes, I've given a whole class on this topic, leveraging partnerships, is the way to grow your audience in 2018. I cannot stress that enough. Um, so what you need to ask yourself is, who's already got relationship with your ideal connector and how can you reach out to them, right, to grow your own audience and make it a win-win, right? Um, this is the best way to get an ROI on your efforts if you're willing to do the work. Um, so how do you do that? What am I talking about when I'm saying who's got relationships with your ideal collector? Well, maybe it's influencers. It depends. It depends on your vision. It depends where you want to go, right? But who's already talking to the people you want to sell to? Is it influencers? Is it the media? See how we're coming back to PR already? Um, is it... A blogger? Are you, do you need to work with designers? Um, is it other business owners in a whole other industry where you could work together to make it a win-win? Possibilities are endless, okay? But if you want to grow, I don't like to say quickly because these things do take time and effort, but in terms of ROI, if you do your research, find the right people, offer them a fresh perspective, offer them a win-win partnership, um, you can be surprised at how quickly you could ramp up your community with the right people, with people that will actually convert once you make an offer, which is exciting, isn't it, right? Because what's the point of having, you know, 5,000, 25,000 followers if um, they're not the right people and they're not gonna convert into sales. So why is it important to leverage partnerships? I've talked about it already, but here are a few more reasons, right? Because doing it alone will be, take much longer, right? Like I said, organic growth takes time, paid advertising costs money. Um, and it's more, much more fun, right? When you can, you're actually meeting people, creating opportunities, they're happy, you're happy, it's fun. Media and influencers need the content that you have, right? So you have something to say, you have a message to share, you have art, um, you have a story. We're in a world of content, right? People, they all need content, they wanna hear about you. It also accelerates the trust factor. Remember when we talked about credibility, Having a blogger, having an influencer, having a designer talk about your work is very powerful, much more powerful than just you saying, you I'm here, I'm good, look at me, right? 
And it's the only way to beat the algorithm. Like I said, I'm putting beat into quotation marks because you can't beat the algorithm unless you're like a math whiz, right? The algorithm is there for a reason and it's there to get the right posts in front of the right people. So if you're creating relevant content, if you're sharing relevant content, if you're creating meaningful conversations, then you don't need to beat the algorithm, right? People are coming to you, right? And they're enjoying the content. Okay, sales, cash, cash flow, money, right? We need that because like I said at the beginning, if we don't have cash coming in, we're a hobbyist, which I have nothing against, which you can decide that that's what you want after this presentation. You're like, I'm not doing this stuff. Fine. That's fine. Um, I love hobbyists. It's just that if you want to have a business, you need to make sales. Okay. Um, unless you live on a planet that I don't know about where we don't need money. Um, and really when I empower artists to make more money, it's really because I want them to be able to create more, to impact more people, to have more freedom, right? It's not about the stuff. Trust me. It's never about the stuff. Okay. So sales don't happen by themselves you need to create sales opportunities, okay? Uh, people won't just remember that you're creating artwork in your studio and that it's for sale. Like I said, remember, 5,000 images a day that we're seeing. So, no, ye people aren't thinking about what you're doing if you're not reminding them. So what I want you to do right, is to turbocharge your sales, okay? Are you making it first, right, in terms of operations in your business? Are you making it easy for people to find and buy from you, right? Are you sending traffic to your website? Uh, when people on your, on your website can people easily find the work, see what's available and inquire about it, right? Do you have systems in place to easily respond and have sales conversations with prospects, right? Uh, do you have strategies in place to follow up with prospective clients or past clients? And do you know how to close a sale? Right. So those are, in terms of operations, very important to know. Now, that's the first part. And that's, I would say, 20% about the sales. The other 80% is mindset. How are you feeling, right, when it comes to talking about money and sales, right? Are you projecting your own feelings, like when somebody's trying to sell you something, does that upset you? Do you feel triggered about that? And are you projecting your own feelings and keeping, and that's keeping you from actually asking for the sale and being proactive, right? Are you overcomplicating things and thinking, well, when I have a better website or when my Instagram has more followers, then I'll ask for the sale when my email list hits a certain number, right? So you need to be careful about that, right? So you're kind of overcomplicating things, think, giving yourself a bunch of excuses that you're not ready, but actually it's just in between your ears because there's actually people out there that want you to ask for the sale, make a pitch, make an offer, okay? So, and why am I talking about this today? Because um, you can have the best plan in the world if you're not putting yourself out there, if you're not taking risks, if, uh, if you're, yes, you might hear crickets and that's totally fine, right? But remember that art that isn't seen cannot be sold, right? It's like you can't sell a 
$5,000 painting if you don't create one. It's never going to happen, right? And you need to have systems in place to make it easy and enjoyable for people to buy from you, right? Just this quote, for example, 55% of visitors spend fewer than, you know, 30 seconds on your website. So if going on your website is a headache and they can't find what they're looking for within 30 seconds, they are gone. You've lost them, right? And in terms of mindset, it, it requires a very strong mindset to do sales because Follow up is the name of the game, but 44% 44 pe 44 of people give up, give up, right, um, on following up after one follow up because they're worried they're going to bother people when we know that 80% of sales happen after the fifth follow up. Second takeaway today that I want you to remember, okay? Stop worrying that you're bothering people. Because sales happen when we, not annoying, but when we're gently nudging people to buy. Because to be honest, there's always something more important, not more important, but there's always something that's going to come up in people's life that's going to distract them from buying art. So if you're not on the ball, you're going to lose sales. Now step five, right, we're talking about growth here right so how can you take i just want to make sure i didn't miss anything here in my notes because i ad lib and then yeah oh the last thing i want to say about sales is that if you stop being afraid of it and you see it as a challenge and fun and again that comes to maybe having accountability having a mentor somebody your community or friend uh, to challenge you, it can actually become fun, okay? And the number one question, I thought I had this in my slides, but I don't. The number one question I want you to ask yourself every week in your business is, what am I selling this week, right? Because if you're not asking yourself these questions proactively, what am I putting out there? Who am I talking to? Who am I following up to? What am I selling this week? Then you're not putting yourself in a position where you're going to really sell. So growth, right? We always want to take things to the next level. Like I said earlier, when, when it, where is then? There. When I get there. Because there's always going to be desire for growth, right? Um, you want to have an entrepreneurial growth mindset. You see how I spoke about mindset through the entire time? And it's funny because I'm a strategist. And when I started this business, I was all about strategy until I realized that yeah, it's all great and fun to have strategy, but if you're not executing it, something's keeping you from executing it. It's usually happening in between here. Um, so having that growth, that strong entrepreneurial mindset is what's going to distinguish you from the other artists who are starving. Okay, look at the artists that you, I don't want to name names because everybody has different artists that they, they that that are their models that they just uh aspire to become like they probably have very strong willpower but they don't just rely on willpower they have a strong mindset and they surround themselves right they don't just do things everything alone um because really when you think about it you don't necessarily need more content you don't need necessarily to learn so many new things right because probably all the things that i share with you today you heard about them one way or the other what you need is more context right not more content but more context right to help you see and seize opportunities when they show up so that you can ask yourself um I wonder what would happen with if, right? Like a science experiment. What would happen if I tried this opportunity? What if I tried this strategy? And be willing to execute it to the fullest so that you can get results. It really, really all starts with you. Growth starts within, okay? And how we plan for it, right? So when's the last time you took a step back to see the big picture for your business, right? So at first I talked about planning and setting goals and things like that, but then 
right? What do you do in terms of daily mindset work? So I really encourage my clients to do regular journaling or like I said, having regular conversations with colleagues so that they can see what's holding them back and um, do what needs to get done to go and push through those blocks, right? Looking at what worked and what didn't work without judgment, getting that feedback so that we can pivot and grow based on what is working for us. Because what's working for you? You know, at the beginning I said, you're, you're maybe scrolling through Instagram and asking yourself why others it's working and it's not working for you. Well, chances are what's working for others might not work for you. And if you're not regularly looking at what worked, what didn't, get feedback and then pivot and do the right things as you move forward and really build on what's working, um, you're going to um, miss opportunities, right? Quarterly planning is important and also an ongoing brainstorming of new streams of income because most successful artists that I know who make a living out of their art have more than one stream of income, right? They have different streams of income that comes instead of having this fluctuating income, they have a more flat revenue every month that's coming in because they have revenue coming in from different streams. That's how you plan for growth. Okay. Why is this important, right? Because you can't and shouldn't do it all, right? And that's where the overwhelm comes. I need to be doing Pinterest and Instagram and what's going on with the algorithm on Facebook and my website and my online shop and this show that's coming up and these galleries I need to apply to, these designers that I want to reach out, right? So if you're not keeping track, right, and you don't have a plan for growth, then you're just wasting your time trying to do everything, right? How can you focus on your zone of genius if you don't know what that is, if you don't know? Because what I want for you is not to keep on trying to fix the things that are broken, but rather have fun and enjoy yourself building on the things that are working. And really, when you think of it, you only control what you think and what you do, right? So um, we need to let go of the outcomes that we don't control and focus on the elements that we control in our business. So here they are, my five steps to growing your business in 2018. Uh, of course, there's so much more that, like I said, that could be said about each aspect of the plan, uh, each, act, each step. Uh, but for the purpose of today's training, right, I said that I would be respectful of your time. Um, I've zeroed in on one element for each. So hopefully this has given you food for thought, right, things to think about as you grow this year because we still have 10 good months left this year, okay? But I can hear you saying, wait, what? This is it? Like, I know this or... Uh, you can't leave me with just telling me that, right? Because you think you're overwhelmed. You're still overwhelmed because now I've added maybe more things to your plate or you feel like you've tried it already. I hear that. I've tried it already. Yeah, sure. <laughs> How do I know that it will actually work or where to start? Okay, so this is when I want to take five minutes of your time. I've even putting my timer here to tell you about the lab before I answer your questions. So if you have questions, you can already start plugging them in in the chat and I will have a look at them right after I introduce you to the lab because like I said, I'm in no rush to leave, okay? So how have things been working for you? Okay, so if you're here, I'm guessing not so good. I wanna introduce you to Chris. Okay, so when I met Chris, her galleries had closed, she was overwhelmed, she was discouraged, and she was allergic to planning. And when she joined the lab, since joining the lab, she participated in art fair, sold her biggest pieces, started a second stream of income, and she even, even um, turned down a gallery that wasn't a good fit for her. Can you imagine that being there? That's so great, right? Julie, Julie's in Australia. So maybe some of you are watching the replay and you know Julie because Julie um, 
she's in Australia and she says that when she joining the lab was the best thing that ever happened to her uh, I remember when she joined her confidence was at very like was rock bottom she was feeling burnt out and now she's actually enjoying her art business she's growing her skills she's made decisions to have a business that fulfills her not only financially but creatively and personally as well i'm so so proud to be working with both julie and chris uh, these are just two members two members of the artist entrepreneur lab an exclusive business incubator that i've created for artists and creatives so if you want to go check it out it's the artistentrepreneur.com slash lab okay the doors oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Doors for the lab only open, open when I say they open, and they are open today for the next 10 days. Okay. Um, why do I only open them once or twice a year? Because those of you who are in the lab can tell you that I spend a lot of time getting to know and invest in getting to know and supporting my artists in the lab. So I can't open it all the time. Uh, because it's very time consuming for me. It's a real, it's an investment for my clients. It's a real investment for me as well. I'm gonna take this off. Okay, so what is in the lab? Okay, I believe there's nothing out there like it. You get trainings, coaching, community, okay? Um, basically, and if you have questions, pop them in because I want to do this quickly, but I want to make sure you understand what the lab is. It's a business incubator that gives you training. So when you join, you get lifetime access to the trainings library. So no rush that you have to go through all. Uh, we have over, over 15 hours of training in there. You have lifetime access. You have access to quarterly planning sessions with me live. <clears throat> okay. And a bunch of templates and cheat sheets in our members area. This is valued at $9.97, just the trainings, okay? When you join the lab, you also get six months, six months of access to me, okay? Um, my one-on-one -on -one coaching is very much more expensive than that. So now you get six months of every other week we meet for coaching calls, ask me anything, I know you, I know your business, you come in, you ask me what you want. Um, six months of weekly live office hours. So we have a private Facebook group. Every week I come in, I do a live video and you can come in, ask me questions, uh, stay accountable, what you're working on, um, checking with us. Six months of the members only community. So that's the private Facebook group and six months of personal feedback, like I said. So this, Normally, just that, for six months, it's $97 a month. So it's valued at $582. And I also have bonuses when you join. So lifetime access to the Artist Entrepreneur Bootcamp, which is worth $147. You, can, you have the chance to win a one-on-one -on -one with me every month. We also pair you up if you're interested with an accountability partner. Um, we do monthly themes, weekly challenges, and you also have access to guest expert trainings, okay? So all of this, all of this you get access to when you join the lab. That's why I say that it's such a complete program because you have training, coaching, and community. So maybe you listen to me talk about um, Julie and, and Chris, and you're like, yeah, but I'm just starting out. The lab, is it for me? It's absolutely for you too, because for instance, when Lena joined, she hadn't started at all with her business, right? But she wanted to make sure that she wasn't going to waste her time, that she was going to put together a plan that was actually going to work, right? And it's really opened up her vision. It opened up possibilities for her. She's even, um, paired up with someone in the lab and had a two pieces, her first show in a group show through connections that she made into the lab. So really Lina has grown so much um, over the past few months. And when she started, she had absolutely nothing. Um, so there's definitely room for people who are just starting out in the lab as well. 
uh, Kathleen, Kathleen, she has an MFA in arts, but she had never really uh, done anything. She was just creating as a hobbyist and she had her own marketing agency. And, uh, she, but this year she was ready, ready to grow the art aspect in her life. And she told me how things, her mindset has changed, her vision has changed since she's joined the lab. She's already, she's had one solo show. She's already planning her next. And uh, she's super engaged in staying accountable because she knows she can't um, rely on willpower alone. So she's very active in the community to make sure that she delivers on her goals. So basically, like I so, 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 told you earlier, you have total value of $1,876 when joining the lab. That's the total value. Now, is that how much I'm charging you? Absolutely not, absolutely not. So joining the lab is 197 a month for six months. If you wanna pay in full, you even save like $185 or something like that if you wish to pay in full for the next six months, okay? So $197 a month to get lifetime access to the training libraries. If we add trainings to the library, you get access to them six months access to me, my eyes on your business, okay? I wanna introduce you to Sean because yes, we do have men on the lab, right? So uh, Sean, when I met him, he was teaching, right? And he was kind of done with teaching and he wanted to do something, he wanted to live um, off his art and now I'm so happy to say I was like crying when he sent me this testimonial because like Catherine I make more in month than I made teaching and that for me that that is my why that is why I do what I do because when I hear artists that telling me that now their art is financially viable just not only does it make my day, but it just confirms that this is what I was meant to do. Support artists just like you reach their goals. Okay. Because really what I want, my goal, right, is to help you with all the planning part. And remember when I said I'm a geek and I love doing that, I want to help you do it and actually enjoy doing it. And, but it's one thing to have a plan. You need to follow through with the execution. And once you're doing the execution and this mindset stuff and the negative self-talk and all the resistance that shows up, I want to be there to support you so you can push through it and get the results that you want. Okay. One thing I want to be very clear, the lab is not a magic pill. The lab is not a get rich six figures in six months kind of program. Okay. It works. It's support, it's training, it's community. I know it works, that's why I do it. If it didn't work, I wouldn't do it. Uh, but you have to be willing to invest your time, your energy, and trust the process and show up like you did today, okay? And then take action in real life once the camera is closed, okay? Because my goal with the lab is that you never feel stuck again. Like poor Winnie the Pooh here, who's just like stuck. But how is he gonna get unstuck, you think, with help of others? And that's really what we do in the lab. We support each other, not just me, but the community of artists, okay? I'm truly committed and that's my promise to you, okay? So my guarantee, that no artist is ever left behind. If you do the work, if you show up, if you demonstrate, right, that you are committed and that you are doing the work and you still don't see results, I don't leave you behind, okay? You reach out to me and we hop on a call, a half hour call for free and I will pinpoint in your business what's going on, why it's not working and to help you, um, get back into the game because no artist in the lab who wants it to work and actually does the work to get the results that they want are left behind. Everybody gets a chance to succeed, okay? So my question to you, like I said, there's 10 more months. So how is it that you want to feel this year? What are you gonna make of it? And the December 31st, when you close this year, are you gonna be like that, excited of everything that's happened? 
right? I hope so. Whether you do it with me in the lab, whether you do it within your community with other people, get support because I want each and every one of you to feel like that at the end of the year. So if you think you're, we're the perfect fit, then please reach out because doors for the lab close March 30 to 23rd. So we have 10 days. Okay. So this is it. This it was my quick, quick pitch for the lab. I'm just going to add in the chat box right here. Com slash lab. So if any of you want to check out this link, I want to make sure that it's the right one. And yep. Okay. So if you want to check it out, um, I'm, uh, and if you have questions about the lab, I'm more than happy to answer them right now. If you have questions about my presentations, this is it. We have time, I promise you. Uh, Norma says, I recommend Catherine's Consult. Oh, Norma, so nice of you. Consulting services to all. Norma is a action taker. Oh my God, she has blown my mind. She has done such great things. Um, so, so proud of her. Okay. Everything Cindy says, everything you're describing is me. Oh my God. Okay. Well, yeah, I've kind of been doing this for a while. And although we're all very different, and that's when I say that when I'm in the lab, I really get to know you all. So although everybody's different, usually there's something that you know, we all crave community, we all crave support, and yeah, we, we are not so um, different um, when we start looking at it. Uh, <laughs> exact posture, actually. Uh, okay, Bob Ross, that was his name, huh, Bob Ross. Um, yes, yes, this is recorded, and all of you will receive a link to the replay. So if some of you wanted to do like some print screens or, ah, oh, what did you say there? I missed it. You can actually watch the, um, the replay. Uh, okay, so Sue asks, I'm a hobbyist, but want to grow it so I can move to being self-employed. I don't have loads of art to sell yet. Should I create more art before trying to launch a full website? Well, actually, Sue, what I would recommend is you don't need to have necessarily a website to start selling. Before even that, I would think about showing the art. So absolutely, you need a consistent body of work. So absolutely, you should work on having a body of work that you're happy with. and then. Try to see if you can show it. Show it online, but also show it offline. Can you apply to a group show or can you get together with artist friends or even do like an open studio in your home? Get people excited about the work, right? And then absolutely you can start building very easy, like even a one page website. It doesn't have to be complicated and then you build on your success, right? Spending six months working on a website and hiding in a studio is not the answer. You want your work to be seen. So I would say think about ways that you can show the work, gain feedback from the market, right? See what you have that's working, maybe things that aren't working so well. It will give you some creative ideas of what you should be doing next. And um, it's going to build, help you build momentum, really, because um, what really creates momentum um, is wins. Okay. So if you take too long to set up all these things and you're not seeing anything moving in your business, that's when you get, um, you get discouraged. Okay. So motivational quotes on Instagram will take you so far. What will really get you results is, um, getting some, a few wins. Uh, Julianne, my daughter's name. What is your advice for an artist who too often starts new series and are overwhelmed with the writing text part and photographing and putting it out to sell? <laughs> well, 
<laughs> you need to look at what's overwhelming you there. Maybe you need to find support, right? So maybe um, doing it with somebody else, right? With an accountability partner. If you have an other artist friend, maybe you do the there you do the work together. You hold each other accountable. But really, you need to ask yourself. Okay, you need to ask yourself, Julianne. Not how it's making you feel when you're going to do it, okay? Because, of course, we all have other more fun things to do than, you know, putting things into a database or photographing, and that's, that's fine. I, I understand that. I'm not saying that it's all fun and happy games, but what you need is to put yourself, right, into the position of what it is that you want, right? And visualize yourself. Visualize yourself when everything is photographed and then you can go and sell it and then visualize yourself with your collector, right? Who's buying the work and is super excited and bringing the work into their home. How does that make you feel? And then that, that feeling, you need to bring it back to yourself when you're doing that cataloging that you don't like so much right? Because if you always, it's like, it's like training. It's like exercising. If you're thinking about, oh, do I feel like going to exercise today, going to the gym? Chances are no. <laughs> but if you're thinking about how it's going to feel, right? After you exercise and you have all these endorphins and you're feeling great or where, when you buy these new pair of pants and they're actually fitting you, right? Then you're going to be motivated to go to the gym. So that's really how I want you to be thinking and building that mindset around um, doing that groundwork that needs to be done to get the success that you want. Sometimes we need to get a little bit uncomfortable. I got a Nicola says, I got a little lost <laughs> when you were talking about building a community and reaching out to people. That happens. Sometimes people get confused when I talk. <laughs> uh, don't worry, Nicola. How would you recommend offering a fresh perspective and making a win-win to collectors? Okay, so when I talked about doing partnership, I wasn't talking to collectors. Okay, I was talking to talking about creating partnerships with people who already are talking with your collectors. So I gave examples of influencers, bloggers, reporters, designers, People like that. Even gallery owners can be partners, right? They are partners, actually. So how, what is it that you have to offer, right? So for instance, I know people who do like great uh, contests with, uh, that do contests with influencers to get um, people to follow them on Instagram. And some of the people who sign up the contest end up uh, being um, collectors in the long run, right? Um, so it depends. It really depends. Nicola, I can't really give you more concrete examples. Like it can be your messaging. Maybe you have, you know, maybe your work has a deep meaning and you have deep convictions and you could be invited on a podcast to talk about what it is the meaning behind your work and why it's important and why people should should be um be raise awareness on a cause on an issue on a message or something like that it really depends i would need to know more about what your work is all about to because that's what i've been doing for 17 years pr and finding angles for people so that they can pitch ideas right um so hopefully this has given you a little more clarity but then you need to look at what is your message what is your why who it would interest and then making a pitch sandy says thank you i say you are welcome sandy um have some take thank you catherine have some takeaways for today wonderful now we need to take action can we join the lab at any time or are there only specific times of year to join yes so there are only specific times like i explained doors are now open for registration until next friday march 23rd why do i do it like that because i don't want to spend all my time marketing what i want is to be in the community and help the artists who join the lab. Um, when we have people, a few years back, I had that, people would come in all the time, anytime, and it was very overwhelming, 
for the people who were in the community because there was always new people coming in, like who's this new person? The people who were coming in at any time didn't feel like they were fitting in because they were like, it's like jumping into a conversation that's already started. So, and for me, it was very overwhelming because I always had new people to learn. So every, the new core starts March 23rd. Everybody comes in at the same time and we get started. One thing I want you to know is that the lab is not an online course. There are some trainings that you can go and watch to support if there's a specific area that you need training on, but it is not a course. It's not a week one, week two, week three kind of thing. It's personalized group support, coaching, consulting. It's having me at your fingertips. Okay. With the, the Facebook group, the um, twice monthly coaching calls and the weekly um, office hours that I do live. Um, so yes, if you do need more training, there's training available, but it's not a class. It's not a course. I've teached creative entrepreneurship in the past. I, I can explain complicated concepts very simply, but uh, most of you will maybe need a few areas of training that I will point for you if you need it. But what it is really important to understand is not a training, okay? And no, there's you can't just come in in the lab anytime during the year. You can come now, between now and the next 10 days. Do you have group meetings? Um, Tom asked, thanks for your time and info today. You're very welcome, Tom. Do you have group meetings as part of the lab? Yes. So we meet twice a month, okay? And um, like this workshop, these are recorded. So for any reason, if you're working, if you're in another time zone, you can't make it live, you can always send me the questions in advance. And since I know everybody in the lab, I know what you're working on. You can send me a novel if you want. I read it all. And I answer during those meetings. And if you're not there, you can always catch a replay. For instance, I know Julie, like I said, we have people in Europe and Australia. They can't always make it live. Um, so, um, they can catch a replay, but their questions are always answered. And then we continue the conversation on the Facebook group. Are there regular times? Just wondering how it works with people in different time zones. So I try to vary times. Okay. Uh, sometimes I do them in the morning. Sometimes I do them in the evening, uh, in the afternoon. I don't do evenings and weekends, but I vary during the day so that everybody can get um, some sort of time with me. Um, Chris asks, how do I work out my message? I just don't know where to start with this. Okay, so Chris, really, um, I want you to just stop pushing it. Like, I need to figure out my message because that's not how it's going to come. Okay, I want you to Take a pen, take a journal, and start journaling. Uh, if you've read The Artist's Way, you know there's these morning pages that are recommended. So I recommend The Artist's Way morning pages that you write at least three pages a day. Why three pages? Because usually the first two pages are like what you think you should be writing, and then the third page is really where the re real stuff comes out. You wanna think about your why. Why is it that you're doing this? And not just writing, isolated, but also when you're creating the art. When you're creating the art, there's inspiration that comes to you. It's always good to have pen and paper near you so you can start writing like where this inspiration comes from. Why are you doing this? Why did you decide to create, right? Um, and that will get the ball rolling. You can also ask people around you, people who know you well, to ask them like, how do they perceive you? What is it that they found interesting in what you do, right? Survey them a little bit, um, grill them a little bit, and that will give you some insight that you weren't expecting that you can then build on as you work on your messaging. Thank you for all the information. You are very welcome. Uh... I'm trying to see all the questions. If I missed the questions, I'm sorry. I tried to see them all. Um, mm -hmm. 
Very welcome, very welcome. Isn't having an elevator pitch or a clear, concise concept about your art reductive of what you do and who you are? Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, it would be great, Elizabeth, and if we could all have the time in the world to share uh, what we're about. And I think that, you know, having a way of talking about our work in a concise way never hurts because if you can't bring it together in a concise way, that would mean that other people would have difficulty repeating it. Remember that we live in a time of like it or not, I'm not saying I agree with that, but we live in a time of instantaneity and 140 characters. I'm not saying your elevator pitch needs to be 140 characters, but it needs to be clear and concise if you want other people to, um, to be able to repeat it, to understand it. Now, with that being said, Elizabeth, of course, like you need to, you can't just stick to that, right? Then once you, you're clear on what your message is and what it is that you're all about, what your why is, and that you can share it in a couple of sentences, then of course I want you to build on it, right? You're going to build on it and use it for all your, your communication channels. And you're not going to constantly keep repeating that same old tape over and over again, right? But um, what we want is for people to understand what it is. And if it's too difficult for you to explain it concisely in a concise matter, then imagine your galleries, your designer partner, your partners maybe in design, your clients, um, it's going to be even tougher for them. So that's really why, of course, I'm not saying that um, I don't want to think that you're, it's reduct. I agree with you that it can be reductive if you limit yourself to that, but then you can have so many opportunities to expand. Anna says, thank you, Katrin. It was inspiring. Well, very welcome, Anna. Chris says, hello, everyone. Oh, Chris, hi. <laughs> I'm in the lab and totally recommend it. Offers such clarity and mountains become molehills. Oh, thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. Mwah. Thank you so much for joining today. Um, I, Sue says, I have a Facebook page, but rarely get feedback. If I ask my viewers for feedback, what they like to see, I get loads of likes, but what's the best way to get better rapport online? Um, okay, well, first, uh, probably you need to be more clear, right, on what you're asking feedback on, being very specific, because People don't have time to start thinking what they want to see more of, right? Um, so you need to be very, very specific. Most people won't even give you that kind of feedback. So be very, very specific in your ask. Be very intentional of why you have that ask. Um, also, I just want to remind you that Facebook reach is becoming very difficult. Um, and I would um, recommend that maybe, Sue, you, start, you try other channels like Instagram as well to get that interaction, right? And the question I would have for you, Sue, is how much are you interacting with other people's posts? Because a lot of people tell me I don't have visibility, I don't have, I'm not getting any reach, right? But they're not engaging in other people's posts. And the best way to start conversation is not necessarily with your post, um, is by reaching out on other people's posts and really being active. That's what being engaging and being active on social media is because if people see that you're engaging on their posts and you're supporting them, they're more likely to come and support you as well. Um, do art for yourself first or what's the point? Absolutely. Like everything else, I would say. <laughs> you need to do things for yourself first. I would art, but... Jaina, I would expand that to everything else in your life. Um, because if you do it for yourself first, uh, you'll have so much more clarity and purpose on why you're doing it. And you'll feel so much more confident about what you're doing and then sharing your message with the world. So that I can agree more. So voila, unless other people have questions, because like I said, I'm in no hurry to leave. If you have a question, you can pop it in, whether it's about your business or the lab. Again, just want to remind you, if you want my eyes um, on your art business this year, 
uh, the best way and the at the lowest cost to do so is by joining the lab, www.theartistentrepreneur.com slash lab. If you have questions, don't hesitate to email me, send me a message on Facebook, okay? Um, Chris says, how do you know if your work is good enough to sell? Well, if you don't know, it's then there's work to be done there. Okay, so first you need to convince yourself. I say, try to show it, get it to show, show the work, uh, get critiqued, get critiqued, show the work, and see what kind of response you get from the market. But I would say that it's going to be very hard for you to put yourself out there if you don't build that confidence first. And you know what? You can just try, Chris, because what's the worst that can happen? The worst that can happen is that it's, you need to go back to the drawing board. And we all have to do that uh, sometime in our lives. So it's really not the end of the world. Okay? So, um, well, you're very welcome, Chantal. Chantal so very informative and motivating. Well, that's what I do. So thank you everyone who joined today. I really hope that you found this content useful. Remember, whether you decide to join the Artist Entrepreneur Lab or not, just content is not enough, right? You need to also take action if you want things to happen in your art business this year. Merci beaucoup. Merci à tous. Have a great day and I will speak to you soon. Bye-bye.